What are they going to miss with Clay Thompson? Spacing? Shot making? Now you can say, well, you didn't make a shot in Sacramento. I gave the play. It was all for 10. It was bad. It was all time bad. But how do you replace that? Who's the replacement for Clay if he does move on? How do you replace that? I mean, they're going to need multiple guys this year to step up in terms of scoring and, and just outside shooting. You, you don't. You, you, you just don't replace that volume with one person. To me, that would be an aggregate solution. I mean, this is this is the money ball thing right here. Like we're not we, we can't find Giambi, but can we find two guys that can give us Giambi's production? Like that's well, you're looking at some sort of an aggregate solution. And even then, I think it's very difficult. But that's I think that's what Dunleavy's tasks were doing, either via the draft, via free agency. See, if, if you move off of Wiggins, for example, and let's say Clay does go elsewhere, you have to find a way to offset the production of Chris Paul, because he'll probably be out the door, Clay Thompson, and Andrew Wiggins. So there's the offensive component, there's the defensive component, and then there's the fit alongside what your current roster is. To me, they're, if they're going to try to find it, I don't know if you're going to find three players to offset that aggregate production. It might be five, six guys. I don't know. And I don't even know. I don't even know what that looks like. Now, what's your rotation? What are you doing with the Moses Moody? Are they expecting him to take a leap forward? Are you expecting Jonathan Kaminga to offset some of That's that production? Big. I. I don't know what their blueprint is. I don't think what to say one person is going to replace 253s made. That feels aggressive. Let's go to May Money in Oakland. May Money, what's happening? Hey, what's up? Top of the morning, fellas. What's up? <laughs> Okay. All right. Let me just handle this real quick because I'm so sick and tired of hearing about all this clay, this clay, that clay, this for the past, I don't know, two years. Uh, so let me just handle it real quick. So the first thing that I have to say, like the whole social media thing, I, I'm not even going to like really try to uh, navigate myself around the thinking of that. But I, what I saw like after that is like Clay's been riding his bike and he's been, you know, hanging out with his dog and going to places that he loves to be and being happy and stuff. So what I'm feeling for Clay is that he, first of all, he hasn't been feeling the love. Maybe this has been the least taxing because he's been taken for granted. If I have to say like the least, like, like, what is all this clay slender? Like how much more can he take as a person? Like he can do no, like he can do no right in the eyes of the Warriors fans. So I would leave too, if I were him, like, okay, there's no love for me here. There's no happiness for me here. Apparently everybody wants me to be gone. So I'll, I'll just be gone. That's what I would do. And so, yeah, I, I kind of feel clay on that. And I'm really sad it to, like for all of these fans to be like, oh, Clay is, is trash this and all this and Clint Thompson this and that. Like that, I don't think that's fair. Draymond is the one that pretty much destroyed the last two seasons just from his antics and nobody is giving him hell up and down the wazoo. So like, I, I, I agree with Clay. Like if he has to move on and do things that make him happy, then I think that's what he should do. Well, you know, it's, it's, it- <laughs> There's the real life component. There's the social media. So throw the social media to the side. Monte, you're at that stadium more than anyone I know. Does that crowd still react positively to Clay Thompson? For the most part, I think. Yeah. For the most part. Because like, when but then I, there's also fans who are walking around saying, "Man, they got to get rid of Clay." Okay, but, but are they actively booing him during the game? No, I guess nobody's is what booing. I'm, nobody's booing. Yeah. Him. So no, like, Warrior fans are too classy for that. For well, the most part, at the stadium, they're not booing. Well, that I, I guess <laughs> that's where I'm going because like, and I, I'm not again. I'm not saying that interactions elsewhere in his life are are negative or positive. I just know that at the arena, when Dunleavy would touch the ball, this is going back, okay? this is I'm trying to think of guys who were booed by Warrior fans. There was a time when Dunleavy would touch the ball, he would get booed by the home crowd, yep. okay? I can understand that having an, a, a crazy effect on you. I get the social media is totally unique. because part of didn't, today's game. It's, Dunleavy it's, didn't have it. But at the arena... I only went to a handful of games this year. I didn't sense this crazy no. negativity in the arena for Clay Thompson. No. But that doesn't mean that he's not in his feelings on his phone. That's, that's like, just I get 18, that too. That's just 18,500 fans at Chase Center. There's over a billion Warrior fans worldwide, right? They have become a worldwide brand. Yes. All over the world, people are rocking Warriors gear now. Sure. They know about it. And so social media, whether we like it or not, does have an influence. It's part of our culture now. It is there. It's not going anywhere. 
<laughs> Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, you name it. It's not, well, TikTok may go somewhere, but Instagram <laughs> and Twitter, X, whatever it is, it's not going anywhere anytime soon. So it's baked into our culture now. It's part of the culture. You know, so when you say, and I hear what you're saying when you say it's not real life, it's not real life. Well, kind of is now. It is real life because you know what? Real life people use that against you or they say, hey, look at this guy's profile. He's so clean cut. Oh, look at him. He's tweet nice things. He's professional. The minute I tweet something, I say, I know how many conversations I've had with Matt get about social media. But I'll tell you, you need to tone it down. You're here. They're there. It is part of real life now. We got to we gotta stop saying it's not real. It's part of our culture now. If you get fired for social media for something you're tweeting or something you're posting, yeah. oh, it's part of real life. It's, yeah. it's a reality now. But but I guess where I'm going, like, this, this is like, real quick, Steph texts in at halftime. He checks Twitter at halftime. Okay. It's a fact. Oh, okay. Like, so it's, okay. it's, it's it's there, so it's tough to tell it halfway. But if it's having a negative it. effect on your psyche, any therapist would tell you, like, Dude, what do you need? Like uh, for Clay's status and where he's at, what do you need it for then? If it's if it's really having that big of a detrimental effect, like my wife doesn't have social media, you know, and now she doesn't need it. You know what I mean? It, for anything, she does. It's not like her work, you know, requires it. And I don't think Clay Thompson needs it. If we're being real, now he might want it. That's a different conversation. But if it's having such a negative effect on him, and he is consuming all the negativity, any normal person in your life that cared about you, or a therapist, or whatever, would say, "Dude, just delete it." Or, or why are you doing it? Why, why does he have to delete it, though? He's, if, because I mean, it's having like, a it's negative like, effect. Like, it has a negative effect on me. I'm not going to delete it. I'm like, you know what? I'm going to keep it. I'm going to get okay, through it. Well. I'm going to get through it. And we don't know how much he really goes on Instagram. Like, he does his Instagram lives on mm -hmm. the boat, which are really cool. I think, it, like, as fans, don't we want to be more involved than these athletes? We always say, these athletes are here. We're there. And then all of a sudden, they let us in. They let us into their lives, and it was like, well, you're posting too much, or you you shouldn't be also. Like, we, we can't have it both ways. Well, no, but what I'm saying is that if the individual, like, again, I'm using myself as an example, if it's if it's negatively affecting your psyche, then yes, you should delete it. You, or or at least remain off it and have someone I, else I think monitor. it's more the rhetoric of what he's heard. And, yeah, you do see someone who replies. You're like, damn, I'm Clay Thompson. I helped you guys win four championships. Nobody knew this franchise, and I got to get – I got to go on my Instagram. Maybe I'm looking, I'm talking to my girl. Maybe I'm sliding in DMs or whatnot. And I'm seeing reactions from my old fan base saying, I'm Clank Thompson. Clank Thompson has made I've money. I've never said, heard any you know, of my friends go to a game and be like, Clank Thompson. No, no they're I, not going to scream it at the game, but I've heard, I've, I've heard it in Thrive City plenty of times. Okay. Man, Bonte, when are you going to get Clay Thompson out of there? I'm not going to just make that up. No, I'll take your uh, word I, for I that. I know what I hear. I, again, I was on the play going to the damn Super Bowl, and they just beat the Phoenix Suns, and the guy says, hey, Bonte, man, they got to get rid of Clay Thompson. He got to go. I'm like, damn. We get rid of the Super Bowl. They just beat the Phoenix Suns. Clay Thompson? That name came from Warrior fans. So I hear Warrior fans say it all the time. Brick Thompson, Clay Thompson, no D Thompson, whatever it is. Uh, let's go to... Uh, Greg in the Port of Oakland. Greg, what's happening? Hey, thanks for taking for a call. Uh, there's a lot of things going on. It's not just play. You, you, you just point to Draymond and how he has been in the league 12, 13 years, and he hasn't had a low post move at all. Um, you know, Wiggins just became the invisible man. Her uh, coaching is susceptible. You know, uh, a lot of things. <laughs> Yeah, your, your call is not really good because the service is bad. <laughs> call us back, Greg. I, I like you. I want to take your call. I don't like flushing them. I see, you know, the call could have been good, but the service is bad. Um, reception was bad, I should say. But you know what? You need to contact Floyd Water Plumbing Drain anyway. Floydwater.net. Let's go to Tamir in Oakland. Tamir, happy Father's Day, my man. How you doing, Tamir? Hey, happy Father's Day to both of you guys. Uh, I'm just calling. I'm not here to bash Clay or any of the fans because, like, uh, Joe was saying, I'd be at Warrior Games. People do call him Clank Thompson and all that other stuff. I just think fans are, like, in the middle. Like, you know, we have the newer fans, and then when you have the older fans, like, for me, being in the Bay Area growing up, we know that eventually this is going to come to an end. So there's the realization of us, some of us fans know that someone has to go. We're not bashing the player, but you got to come to cups with it because if our team doesn't make a change or anything like that, we're going to be doing the same thing we did this year Maybe they'll make the plan, or we're going to watch, be watching another team, you know, go to the finals. So, like, that's part of it. But then you have the newer fans that are like, I hate to say it, but they've jumped on the Warriors bandwagon now because they're winning, and they're like, oh, trade Clay, trade Clay. And then there's us loyal fans that are like, no, we want them to stay. But if we keep them that way and we keep Steph, Clay, and Draymond, we're not going to 
the league is getting younger, athletic, and more. You know what I'm saying? We're looking at it right now with Boston and Minnesota up there. So eventually one of the guys has to go. I don't want Clay going, but I know the realization I'm not the owner. So right. eventually they got to make that decision. I, so from that's a, where, Real quick, Tamir, because you coach basketball. You know the game inside and out. How do you replace him from a basketball standpoint? Now you could say, yeah, he doesn't. he's not the same defender. We all get that at the point of attack. Gets blown by a lot. Not really, and it's not really good when you're getting blown by without any rim protection. But the spacing, the shooting. How do you replace Clay Thompson if he does move on? That's the part that, like you guys are saying with Dunley, you can't replace that because that's two hundred something threes. You can't find a shooter. I've been watching college basketball. There's no shooters like that out there. You, it'll take probably two to three players to replace just Clay for the type of offense we run for spacing for Steph. So that's the part. If it was me, I would get rid of Draymond before I get rid of Clay because as much as you, like you said, Bonte, multiple times this year, that shooting, Clay can shoot. That's why there's a line of teams lined up for him because they know that he can still shoot. So you can't replace that part. As far as defense, you just get a younger person. Hopefully Kaminga and Moody develop yeah. into that, but they have to be able to play to play that defense. But you can't just – it's hard to say who we're going to replace because then everybody wants you to replace it with a big name which will put us in the same situation we're at right now because they're going to want their money as well. So you can't get a big-name player to replace Clay or, like, Penny. You got to pay him that big million, you know, $40 million, that same thing that Clay wants. So you can't replace him with some a superstar. We would have to get, like, a little small-time player or something yeah. and hope that he can play the way Clay does. <laughs> Luke Kennard, everybody. Luke Kennard, step on up. Thanks for the call, Tamir. That's the thing. How do you replace him? You can't replace the shooting. You can't replace the spacing. But I do agree. Changes need to be made. You cannot, quote-unquote, running back after finishing in 10th place in the Western Conference. You just can't. Got to see some type of change. Yeah, I, I keep coming back, and I hear, like, you might hear murmurs or whatever, but, like, I'm just thinking, like, when I go to games, and, again, I'm not there every day like you are for every game, but when I went to games this year, thinking, like, who got the biggest ovations, just in general, Curry clearly number one. Clay was always number two, I felt like, in, in terms of, you know, the the love. And so, sure, I'm but, sure but there's... Shasky, though, but Shasky, could, first of all, how many games did you go to this year? I, I went to four. Okay, four games. And four again, I'm not 41. pretending like yeah, I'm yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the Chase Center I, expert. We talk to Warrior fans every single day. Yes. You got buddies every single yes. day. Yes. We had the YouTube chat every single day. Yeah. Xfinity Mobile text line every single day. You heard Sidey Guru show every single day. Mm -hmm. Willard and Dibs every single day. Callers every single day. That AT5 is not a total representation of how fans feel about Clay Thompson. Now, on game day, well, your fans feel good. Yeah. You feel good. Clay Thompson's humming. You're feeling good. You're not going to boom because you understand what he means to the franchise and what he's meant for this organization and what he's meant for this region. I don't think that's a reflection of how people truly feel about Clay Thompson because there's a lot of people who can't afford to go to the games that we talk about no all the time. Doubt. They no get doubt. priced out. I'm one of them. And they're die and they're diehard dub fans. <laughs> yes. Diehard dub fans. But I but I think where I where I fall down, I guess where I'm going with this is that I don't think people hate him. What I think has happened is I think people are rooting for him and they want him to do well and the results haven't been there and there's been frustration on on his end, on the fans' end, for a variety of things. But I think at the end of the day, people do love him. They do want him to do well. And I just, now, I'm sure, again, you could find a segment of people rooting against everyone. Jesus Christ had, had haters, right? You know what I mean? As, as the saying goes, and I'm not going religious here. Curry's got haters. LeBron's got, pick any player you want who's the most beloved player. They're going to, you're going to have haters. But my point being is that I, I think the average Warrior fan is pulling for Clay and wants Clay to do well. I do think we get frustrated and we're critiquing and we're angry and we're because it's not as good as we want it to be. I'm sure it's not as good as he wanted it to be. And 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 there's just there's a lot of frustration, just a lot of frustration. But I think at the end of the day, I really do. It's not like we hate him. We want him out like that's different. Like Mark Melanson, we hated him. We wanted him out. I think Wiggins, we're done with him. We want him out. I think it's different. I think with Clay, it's like we love him, but damn, like some's got to give here, and, no, and we want to see you do better. And clearly, you're frustrated, and we're frustrated. I don't know; they're at an impasse. But something did give. He went to the bench, and then you had to play, put him back into the starting lineup because you know what? The starters weren't getting it done because all of a sudden the spacing was gone again. Because Pods and Pods had a great rookie year, first team All Rookie, All Rookie team, <laughs> All Rookie team, right? 
but he started struggling with his shot. He hit his rookie wall at some point. Kaminga got hurt, so he had to tweak the lineup once again. But in those 27 games post-All-Star break, in the 14 games or the 13 games that he came off the bench, his percentages all went up. 45% from the field, 41% from three, 19 points a game. And we laid off Clay, and he had some nights where, look, look at these nights. 1 for 9, 5 for 11, 7 to 15, 9 to 16, 6 to 16, 5 to 13, 9 to 21, 8 to 16, 8 to 21, 3 to 13. But then he goes 9 to 15, 6 to 15, 9 to 18, 6 to 15, 11 to 20. So he got some days he's shooting 40%. He got some days where he's shooting 60%. Um, I just thought the rhetoric and the dialogue and the pecking order, because we always love to play the play game now in sports, was Clay's our biggest issue. Wiggins is our second biggest issue. Draymond's our third issue. And like, like I'm thinking to myself, Draymond got, got suspended 18, 18 games. 18 games. Well, I mean. We fielded a zillion calls on Draymond, right. but here's the other thing about Wiggins for the last. And we don't years. ever talk about whether or not Clay Draymond's worth twenty five million a year. We didn't even discuss how well, that, Wiggins. You and I have had that conversation. But we want we but, want Clay to take a ten million dollar pay cut and make ten million dollars less than Draymond Green and Andrew Wiggins, as we say here at Pocket Watch. Wait, 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 you you think fans want him to make fifteen million dollars a year? I, I said he needs to take fifteen million. He needs to take twelve oh. million. He needs to take thirteen million. What? <laughs> on this team? Well, well th- I mean, that's a whole other conversation about but that's, value. That's kinda, but that's baked into the broader conversation here about Clay Thompson. Well, if you want to stay, there's got to be some compromises on some end. Like, I'm sure, look, in Draymond's, Draymond claims he got more money offered elsewhere and he took less to stay here. Whether we believe that or not, that's what he's telling me. I think Wiggins, at the time he signed the extension, probably could have got money, more money elsewhere. So we can make these arguments about taking less and this, that, and the other. Like that, that to me is irrelevant. Getting back to the Wiggins thing, and I think that this is this is something that we've missed on, and I've thought about it while you were talking. Part of why Wiggins hasn't gotten the outward criticism vocally is because his absence two years ago, we weren't allowed to talk about it. It was a private matter. We're not allowed to discuss it. You know, we, in this cult, cancer culture that we live in, we're, it, it, heaven forbid anyone speculate why he would be out. We were trying to be sensitive as a media crew and as a as a fan base. And I thought for the most part, like we've kind of stayed out of why he was gone. Had we been allowed to discuss why he was gone, okay, I personally believe we would have had phone lines busy for a month straight. No, we would have, but also the play. I mean, his, his play, play was, was all time bad. His play was awful. I mean, but terrible. Yet the first part of the season, it was all about Clay and his struggles. And Andrew Wiggins coming out the gate shooting twenty percent from three. Well, <laughs> you know what I'm saying. But but, but again, I guess it goes back to like you're going to fight with your brother more passionately no than you're going to fight with a random. And when Clay is family, that's see, what people I, I can't him. call. See, I can't call Wiggins a random when he was a key cog of a championship team just two years ago. Who's shutting down Tatum and Brown? Who's one of your best two way players? We're like, wow, look at Andrew Wiggins. This. We quote unequivocally said he was the second best player to that championship yeah, run. Yeah, but that's that that. So I but, can't say that he's just like, some random. But that's I can't like do fighting that. for Marco Scudero but, but no, to be a forever no. giant over. No, Marco Scudero Mexico. was here how many years? Two years. Two years. Wiggins been here how many? I don't know. Four? It's complete four. Yeah, yeah but, I can't call him a one night. But he's stand. closer to Marco Scudero than he is like Buster Posey. You know what I mean? Uh, like I think there's levels to it, and like to think that Wiggins was no, ever hear, on the beloved I, scale no, of I, the big three is I, that's just not. I never said that. Nor do I ever think that. I never thought that. But does this say that Wiggins is just a random when he was your second best player during the championship run and he got the fat extension? Well, that was a byproduct. Like, that's, that's just, come on. You know, that's but that a, was a I byproduct. I call Andrew Wiggins. He's a damn champion. Yeah, but we turn on people left and right. I mean, like, well, we, no, we, you guys turn on people no, left and right. No, that's what fans do. Yeah, that's what fans turn on people. Get- 